Hey what is up and welcome back to Trendmix. In today's video, we're going to take a look at 10 snacks you won't eat again knowing how they are made. So to begin at number 10, we have chicken nuggets. Alright, I'll play back a video where this chef makes chicken nuggets right in front of a bunch of kids that have chicken nuggets labeled as their favorite food. Who knows what this is? A chicken! A chicken. I showed them where all the nice cuts of meat came off the chicken, and then you're left with a carcass with all the ribs and the little bits of giblets. Now you can use all the leftover bits to make food. And watch me. Some of the processed foods that you love are made from the bits you don't like. They even add chicken skin. <laughs> Put a load of chicken skin in here as well. You've got to put loads of stuff in it. You know, flavouring in there to make it taste of something nice instead of something horrible. We can get a cutter and cut out our very own patty. Just like that. Put some breadcrumbs on it. Now, who would still eat this? Great. You know, same with me, I would actually still eat those. What about you guys? Let me know in the comments below. Alright, to move up next up at number 9 on snacks you won't eat again knowing how they are made, we have hot dogs. If you really enjoy hot dogs like I do, this video is probably gonna ruin them for you. The cuts they start with are called trimmings, pieces of meat left over from cutting steaks or pork chops. Processed chicken trimmings are added to the ground meat, followed by food starch, salt, and other flavorings. Water is sprayed into the mix and everything is blended together in a big vat. Corn syrup adds a dash of sweetness. Another machine then purees the meat batter into a fine emulsion and vacuums out any air. You know, I'm not too sure what it is about this video, maybe it's just the paste or just the ground up chicken parts, but this just makes hot dogs look absolutely nasty. Moving up next, onto number 8, we have the way that donuts are made. The batter for cake donuts drops from the mixer right into boiling vegetable oil. The nozzles shape the dough as it passes. The donuts fry for about a minute and a half. Yeast donuts require more time to make. A high speed mixer works the yeast dough then workers pull it off the machine into bins. I don't know about you guys, but no video will ever ruin donuts for me. I guess it's just seeing the processed ingredients and how they're mixed might change a few people's perspective on donuts, but maybe not that many. Moving on to number seven, we have any food with red coloring. Now, if the coloring is artificial, then you know the coloring is a petroleum byproduct. But if the red food coloring is natural, it's actually almost as bad. Don't believe me? Watch this video, where this guy breaks down where the natural red food coloring comes from. It's actually the blood from bugs. The cochineal bugs, like I have here in front of me, this is a very common food dye as well. Now, living or dead, cochineal bugs don't really look like anything. But look what happens when you take some of these bugs, we'll put some on this lid here. Now watch this. We're going to add a few drops of water, and watch what happens. In just seconds, it turns into a brilliant scarlet red dye, cochineal extract, or bug juice. Now before you run to the bathroom to rinse your mouth out, stop and take a look at the ingredients list. You may be rinsing it out with even more bugs. So let's say if you order a natural red drink from Starbucks, a huge portion of that drink is just bug blood. Up next on number 6, we have rainbow sprinkles. Now this video might just actually make you think twice before putting rainbow sprinkles on your ice cream. This shortening is added to a mixing tank. Water in the tank is heated as the mixture is gently stirred. Within minutes, the ingredients are dissolved. Liquid food coloring is then carefully added. A mixture of water and shortening are added to the dry mixer containing the powdered sugar and colorant. The lid is closed to start the dough mixing process. The freshly mixed dough is then pushed along a system of conveyor belts and chutes, which move it towards an extruder. It's forced through many small holes, emerging as long, narrow strands which fall onto another conveyor. The 
dough is now sprayed with a confectioner's glaze and carnauba wax. This prevents the sprinkles from leaking colour once they're placed onto the white icing of your cake. Up next, on number five, I'm gonna ruin even more of your favorite sugary foods. And this one is jelly beans. All right, so just check out this video on how exactly jelly beans are made. Liquid sugar is heated in a kettle to about 175 degrees Celsius. Glucose is added, and then starch. An agitating device mixes it all together. Elsewhere in the factory, starch spills out of a drum onto large trays. A moulding board now presses down into the starch. It makes 756 jelly bean impressions per tray. The impressions in the starch will serve as moulds for the jelly bean centres. Nozzles inject the sugar and starch mix cooked in the kettle into the starch moulds. This system can make almost a million jelly bean centres every hour. Meanwhile, the dried jelly bean centres, now separated from the starch, tumble onto a wire mesh conveyor system. The jelly bean centres go into a sander drum that tosses them around, while nozzles spray them with sugar. In another part of the factory, liquid sugar flows out of a kettle into a tub. Blue food colouring is added to the syrup. This mix, called the engrossing syrup, is added along with some flavouring to the jelly bean centres as they tumble around in a tilted spinning pan. Alright, now stepping aside from how unhealthy these foods actually are, seeing them being made in a factory and seeing how the colours mix are actually pretty satisfying. Oh no, leave a like if you agree. Next up, on number 4, we have frozen pizza. Now if you enjoy eating frozen pizza, I got bad news for you. This video might change the way you think of that. To make the dough for the crust, they combine flour, salt, sugar, water, yeast, and oil in a large mixer. And they throw in a bit of cornmeal for flavor. The dough rises for about half an hour. Then they feed it into a chunking machine, which divides the big blob into smaller pieces. Sheeting machine that rolls them into a flat sheet one inch thick. A light dusting of flour keeps the dough from sticking to the machinery. A series of rollers called quick reducers gives the dough an even consistency. A flour brush massages the dough, ensuring a smooth surface. Next, stainless steel spikes pierce the dough with holes about a quarter inch deep. These holes will stop air pockets from forming in the dough. A plastic roller with several round forms cuts the circular shape of the pizza crust. A tank pumps a steady supply of sauce into a reservoir, drenching a roller turning inside. A plastic board then scrapes the sauce onto the crust passing below. A cheese applicator machine controls the output, so that the mozzarella forms an even layer. Now, we all know that airplane food does not taste really great, but this video might actually make you think the opposite of that. To change it up for once, the video that's showing exactly how the airplane food is made might actually make you enjoy airplane food a little bit more. Airline meals start with tons of ingredients, literally. Just one facility can turn out 45,000 meals in a single day. At one end, they stir fry vegetables, while at the other, they saute potatoes. Cooks fire up different grills for the meat. They prepare food for the crew as well as the passengers. On many airlines, the pilot and co-pilot must eat different meals. They start with the food that needs to be reheated on the plane. It goes into foil containers. Smaller containers inside help control the portion sizes. Cooks must be careful not to overstuff them because that could cause messy spills later. Finally, the food is covered with a vented lid. With each menu change, chefs must meet with airline representatives. At number two, we have tortilla chips. Now this video, which shows exactly how these tortilla chips are made, will make you see exactly how much oil is put into these chips, just to make the artificial flavoring stick to the chip. Now it's time for the chips to be fried. 
They'll spend just one minute in a bath of boiling oil at 175 degrees Celsius. Now, if your mouth is now watering and you'd love to grab a handful, think again. At this point, they may look like tortillas, but they have no flavor at all. Getting the flavor onto the chips isn't just a case of chucking it in and shaking the bag. To get a good coating onto each chip, first they're covered in oil again. As this demonstration shows, without oil, all the flavor will just slide off. And finally, number one, where we save best for last. Now, we all know that, that drinking Coca-Cola or any soft drinks are pretty unhealthy for you and your teeth. But do you actually know how they are made? Now, this video might actually pressure you into limiting your intake of soda. Each recipe begins with filtered water. It makes up 86% of the drink. The rest is syrup. Each syrup recipe is a combination of carefully measured ingredients, natural and artificial coloring and flavoring, such as glucose or fructose, extracted from beets, corn, or cane. This machine releases the right proportion of syrup to filtered water, creating the final soft drink, minus the bubbles. There, an injection of carbon dioxide infuses the drink with gas bubbles. The carbonated soft drink now travels to the reservoir of the bottling machine. All right, everyone, those are 10 snacks you won't eat again, knowing how they are made. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, make sure to leave a like to show your support, comment what you thought of the video, and subscribe to see more videos like these many times a week. All right, I'll see you in the next video, and goodbye.